Hey guys, it's Julie, um, your matchmaker and uh, coach. A um, and I have a business matchmaking business in based out of Charlotte. And um, you know, I say this every time I have a um, a love scope, and I'm I'm sure there are new people that pop up um, every time. But um, you know, it always feels weird saying it over and over. But I'll I'll keep saying it. Um, I this time I'm going to give folks a few minutes to join before we get started. Um, one of the questions that I wanted to ask was, um, is is this a good time for everyone to talk about love and relationships? I know it's during the work day, um, the work work time hours. So um, you know, send me your thoughts um, if you would prefer that these love scopes be. Um, nighttime or during the day and mind you this is being broadcast all over the world so uh, you know during the day is, is very relative but if you have a preference as to you know if you are um, you know if the majority says nighttime works then I'll try to try to I will try to do it um, during the uh, nighttime hours but if not, I'll just keep it during um, during the day. So anyway, we have a couple people on, so I'll uh, go ahead and get started. So today on Lovecast, we are talking about um, what you're leading with when you're in relationships. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, you're watching me from Europe. Um, thank you for, for joining in. Yeah, it is relative. So, you know, I don't know if it really matters. It might be nighttime for you guys. I, I'm not sure, but... Um, for me, I think um, maybe some people in the United States, especially on the East Coast, um, I don't know, I see better turnout for people who do uh, podcasts like at night. And I know I do a lot of uh, viewing other people's po um, not podcasts, excuse me, periscopes um, at night. So I don't know, I'll try both and see how, uh, see what the numbers look like and then uh, take it from there. So any who who's, um, what you're leading with. Some people, um, some singles, want to understand um, what they are doing when they're dating. Um, some people just kind of go with the flow. You know, they do. They they don't even think about what they're doing. They just they're being them and um, having mixed results when it comes to dating. And if you are one of those singles who really isn't having a whole lot of luck, then you need to. Uh, figure out what you're doing wrong and one of the things that I see singles and couples doing is um, when you first um, start dating and you first start attracting certain people um, you have to really be cognizant of what you're leading with because if you are leading with sex money um, or this savior mentality, meaning that you are you want to help people, so that's how you draw people in. You draw people in by you know wanting to solve their problems or be there for them or be some sort of like savior. Whatever that whatever it is that you are hooking them with, that's what they will want you for. Um, and everybody has a hook, um, whether it be their you know they enhance their physical features, they know they're you know very attractive, so that's what they lead with, or they know they're very sexy, so that's what they lead with, or they're extremely intelligent, or they are um, very uh, wealthy or whatever. They tend to use their assets to get them what they want. Unfortunately, um, that's not always going to get you what you need in the long run. Um, and, and it's not so much always about sex and money. It could really be about, you know, I, did, I, I, had, I had some, I had a client um, who she found out that she led with um, the savior mentality. She wanted to always help. You know, she said she was a, you know, she was a very kind person. She had a very kind heart. And, um, you know, she wanted to always help them. Um, and, oh, okay, great. You're doing work. Gives <laughs> you something to listen to. Uh, I guess you're not working, <laughs> but that's okay because I want you to join in. Um, she always felt that um, they ended up using her for what she could offer them, and you can't really blame them when that's what you're offering up. Um, if you are quick to find a problem to solve, 
or quick to say, oh, I can help you with that. Oh, I can do that. Or, you know, I can do that because that's what you're using to hook them in, to get them interested or to get them to stay. Once you have them, you want to switch it around and um, say, well, that's all they want me for. That, yeah, because that's what you, that's how you got them. So how you got them is how you're going to keep them. And if you can't sustain um, whatever it is that you did to keep them, they will leave. So you want to make sure that what you're hooking them with is um, authentic and it's real and it's you. Um, but how do you know that? How do you, how do you figure out what you're doing? You have to be conscious of, you know, how you are showing up. Um, do you find that most guys um, or my, most women compliment you on um, how sexy you are or um, how good you look or, you know, they're always flirting with you or they uh, conversations always lead to sex or some innuendos about sex? If that's the case, that's, that's how you're hooking them in. And you have to decide whether you want to continue uh, with that or cut it off or find a way to um, move the conversation away from sex into something that you are more interested in. Um, know that you are enough. I know a lot. I know that sounds cliche and that sounds um, that sounds, you know, very la la land and fantasy land, but you really are enough. Um, you're funny, you're smart, you're intelligent, um, and people love you. Even if everybody might not love you, there are qualities about you that, um, that are lovable. So you want to highlight that. Um, if you are extremely smart, great. Not everybody has to use you for your um, intelligence. Who are you? What's your passions? What are your interests? Um, what do you love to do? What are you, you know, what are some purposes and what, what some passions that you have that are bigger than you? Find those people who love that about you. Find those type of people who you want to be around someone that is authentic to you because that's what's going to hook them in. And you can maintain that. You can sustain that. Um, what you are saying is very true. When I met my wife, I was drawn to her virtue, high standards. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean that even if you are attracted to someone or even if you are attracted, that's fine. No one is saying that you have to downplay um, some of your height, some of your, um, your qualities. But that's not all you are. You're not just a pair of legs. You're not just a bank account. You're not just, you know, a good leg. If that's all you're presenting, and that's all that's all you think you're valuable valuable for, that's all people are gonna want to. That's all people um, are gonna want to uh, meet you for. So, if you have high values, like um, you know, like my friend here said, high values, high morals. Um, you are very funny. You're very personable. You love going out. You love making people laugh. That's something, again, you can sustain. That's you. You can't be anything but you. And you're the most happy when you are you. You don't have to pretend to be something else. You don't have to pretend to um, be more than you are. When you're enough and you're, when you surround yourself with people who that's all they want you for, then that is the basis of a strong relationship. So again, when you're dating, um, when you in this isn't even just about dating. This is about friendships. This is about um, you know colleagues. This is about business relationships. You know any type of relationship. Whatever you lead with is what people will want you for. So you know anyone who are entrepreneurs, anyone who's out there um, and want to uh, find colleagues or business partners or um, you know just mentors or whoever. However you present yourself is what people are going to be drawn to. And if that's not you, and that's not something that you can sustain, you're going to lose those people quickly. And then you're going to figure out like why I can't maintain or why I can't sustain friendships or why I can't sustain business relationships because it's not you. So don't be afraid of being you because you're fine. you know. And if you're not fine, then work on being that way. Work on, um, you know, being okay with you there are um, a lot of resources a lot of people out there who can help you if that's not something you can do on your own or you need some support with that there are people out there 
um, who will help you uh, get to a, um, a better you or support you in being a better you. So um, real short, real quick uh, love spoke today. Um, I think tomorrow I'm going to, because it's Friday, I think I'm going to do something late night. Um, I, I think it's going to be around cheating. Um, it's going to be the evolution of cheating. Um, I know for the most part everyone in, in, in once or twice in their lifetime has dealt with that. If you haven't, you're absolutely lucky. It sucks. Um, but I'm going to talk about the evolution of cheating because to be honest with you, cheating is not just the act. There is, there is a, um, a ramp up to cheating that people need to be aware of and what their um, contribution is to it, whether they are the cheater or uh, the person who got cheated on. So. Um, I hope this is helpful for you. If you um, would like to talk to me privately about anything that we've talked about today or what I've talked about in other uh, Love Scopes, then you can certainly reach me at um, elisimone.com. That's my business, Eli Simone, E-L-I-S-I-M-O-N-E. Um, my email and contact information is on the site. Um, if you'd love to work with me, I'd love to work with you guys. Um, you can uh, fill out an application at bit.ly slash love and life. And um, thank you for listening today. And I will talk to you tomorrow night. All right. Bye.